Hello, hello. Welcome to Real Savvy, a show of interviews, updates, absolutely no outtakes. I really just wanted to talk about kind of what's going on because I know that people are like, oh, it's going to slow down, blah, blah, blah. We've talked about the crash, the inevitable crash before on here, but I kind of want to just give you real numbers that are actually happening because life is crazy and it's been wild out here and everyone keeps telling me, oh, you must be doing so well. You're in real estate. The market's awesome right now. And I'm like, you don't understand. Yes, there's a lot of demand, but that also means that there's so much heavy competition and it's really hard to get buyers into houses and it's really hard because inventory is so low to even have listings available. So we're gonna kind of talk about why that is and what the numbers are telling us for the future. Obviously, I'm not a CPA. Obviously, I'm not an attorney. Obviously, I'm not an economist and I'm not a fortune teller, but I do look at the numbers. I do talk to people that are a lot smarter than I am. So I do have a good idea of kind of what we're looking at. So I'm literally just gonna, I know a lot of these numbers, but I wanted them to be like literally right on the dot so that if any of you fact check me, I'm right on the money. Okay, here we go. So why is this different right why are we not in that crash period and again talked about it a million times but here are updated numbers i want to tell you a few things first thing is the ratio of people moving to florida versus them moving out is seven to one that means for every seven human beings that are coming here there's only one person leaving and typically that one is because of a job or family it's usually not because they go i hate florida even though the whole rest of the country likes to make fun of us there's a lot of people coming here and no one wants to leave so What does that tell you? That Florida rocks, just saying. So seven to one, I'm sitting on the floor, rotating. Okay, seven to one. What that means for Florida is that we are experiencing an even harsher inventory shortage than the rest of the country, right? There are a few markets that are worse than us and we're kind of, but we're in that state where we're a lot worse off than someone in Ohio or Idaho is, right? Let's go over some more things. Right now, 46% of adults between the age of 18 and 29 live at home. That's a big number. That's the highest it's been since the Great Depression. The Great Depression is the only time it was higher, and at the Great Depression, it was 49%. It's only a 3% difference during the Great Depression. The reason I talk about this is because young people are having a hard time finding homes. Yes, they're buying homes more than we thought they would, and a lot of young people are, but It's a really big stat to look at because rent is really expensive. Buying a home is very expensive. People are being priced out and they have to live at home for X, Y, Z reason. So it's really important to look at the actual economic factors of what that's impacting us, of how that's impacting us. So the reason for that, right? I said rent is increasing. Let's talk about rent increasing. It has increased 38%. It increased 38% last year. So when people tell me, oh, you know, I'm just going to wait, I'm going to rent, you know, I can't afford to buy a house. House prices went up about 20% last year. Rent went up 38. Can someone tell me how it's cheaper to rent? Maybe you don't need the down payment, but guess what? You're spending the down payment in your freaking rent every year. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to get that back in rent. That's a whole other tangent. But I just wanted to put that out there that rent has gone up 38%. Another big reason for that is the inventory shortage has been so, so crazy. Not only because people don't want to move or everyone's moving here, but also because even people that are selling or trying to buy something else, they can hold on to both houses. Why? Because rates were so low or because they have so much equity in their house, they can pull it out, put it on a down payment on another one and keep This one is a rental property. So all of a sudden, people are owning more and more homes and not having to sell them, hence inventory issues. So let's talk about what the inventory issues actually are, right? You hear it all the time. We're down this percent, this percent, 50%. What does that mean? Let's look year over year what the actual number of houses were. I have the like actual stats because I just round it when I talk to people, right? So let's talk about it. January 1st of 2020, nationally, guess how many homes were on the market? I just lost my place. No, I didn't. Yeah, I did. Okay. Guess how many homes were on the market January 1st, nationally in the United States, 2020? There were 736,000. Fine number. We were in a mostly neutral market. You could still, you know, wait a little bit to bid on something. There might not even be multiple bids. It was a good time. Um, January 1st, 2021, there were 380,000, right? That's a significant drop. Now you look at January 1st, 2022, 293,000. You can obviously see we're going down. So when we say inventory has decreased, guys, it has 
significantly decreased. And like I said, that's because interest rates were so good. People were buying multiple homes. People aren't moving. And another reason is the shortage of homes that have actually been built. I touched on this before, but I'm going to give you actual numbers that an economist told me, okay? So on average, every year, the United States builds around 750,000 homes. Sounds like a good amount, right? It's fine. 750,000 homes. And that really happened after the crash, right? In 07, 08, all that stuff. No one wanted to build. Two million tradespeople left the industry. And what I mean is like carpenters and people that install granite and AC and plumbers. Two million left the industry because no one was building houses. So all of them had to get alternative jobs. So all of a sudden, even people that wanted to build houses couldn't really find people. Everyone was getting out of the industry. So what that did was it in the moment, yeah, there was a lot of supply because everyone was foreclosing, but there was no new supply being generated. So it's essentially like everything was BOGO, but nothing was coming into the store to fill up once the BOGO was gone, right? Because yeah, even though the BOGO, they need to get rid of it now, they're going to need something in a little bit to stock that shelf. That is essentially the same thing that happened with the housing industry. So all of a sudden, 13 years later, we have 13 years where we didn't build enough because we didn't need it. The supply was there. There was all the economic factors, but the economy is caught up, you know what I mean? And so we have such lack of housing. So let's talk about the actual legitimate numbers of lack of housing. We are short 4.8 million homes for the demand. 4.8 million homes, right? That's insanity. So like I said, 750,000 is what America builds in a year. Let's just say we increase by 25% every year, which would be phenomenal and the need is there. So if we increase by 25%, get up to about a million homes every year, it would still take 18 years to fill the deficit of what we need. And if you haven't heard, new construction right now, even though you see them popping up everywhere, especially in Orlando, it is so expensive to build a house right now because obviously supply chain is actually impacted. It's not just a thing that people say is an excuse. It's like a legitimate thing. You can't get garage doors. You can't get windows and you can't close on a house according to the county and according to code without windows and without egress and all these different terms that I'm not going to throw at you, but you need things on a house to close. And so prices keep going up. And because the demand's there, the builders are like, well, we can charge them this. They're going to pay this. And because it costs right now, I was at a builder the other day and one of their models has a balcony, small balcony, not like wrap around, not anything crazy. It's off of like a loft in the upstairs in the second story. So it's like maybe eight feet long max, right? Six to eight feet long, probably. It costs right now $43,000 just to build that balcony because of what's happening in the industry and how expensive it is to get supplies and railing posts and all these random little things that you wouldn't imagine costs a bunch of money. Screens. One of the builders I went to is not putting screens on windows because they can't get screens. So they're just selling them without screens. And I was like, is that, I don't even know if that's good. I don't know, but he had to do it to get it done kind of thing. Craziness. So 18 years to cover up that deficit. Um, Let's talk about or like Central Florida, right? So this is like Orlando, Seminole County, all these different little counties that are in the central uh, center of Florida. January of 2020, there were 7,030 homes on the market. So national was 736. So it looks pretty similar, right? It kind of mirrors it. January 2021, 4,233. And then we looked at December 2022 because at the time that I wrote this down, January wasn't completely wrapped up yet and hadn't been calculated and nothing had been finalized. It was about 2,600. So yeah, December's a little less than January, but even if it upticks, we're still ridiculously low. Ridiculously low, right? Even if everyone in forbearance foreclosed, we'd still be in a severe seller's market because we cannot make up that deficit of inventory. So what we're kind of looking at is that Orlando and really all of Florida is kind of like California 20 years ago where you could sorry for anyone that was watching that my audio stopped so I just started again I'm almost done just really quick so central Florida has been insane for growth and actually Marcus and Miltrap which is one of the top commercial brokerages in the United States named Orlando number one for multifamily which means developers are coming in here to invest in that it's really hard to get any kind of commercial lease or commercial anything because it's so expensive um, to do it because everyone wants to be here. So it is essentially California 20 years ago is where I was, okay? So 
everyone is trying to move here. Commercial developers are moving in. Everyone's trying to get commercial real estate, multifamily real estate, which is, and it's like doctors and developers. It's high end, high net worth individuals that are buying commercial real estate, which guess what that means? They're bringing in jobs. So even more people are going to move here and Disney's doing their whole thing. There's firms in New York that are coming down here. It's been insanity. So what I've been telling people is if you own a house and you don't have to move, don't move. Um, and when people go, oh, you know, but the rates are so good. I'm, Heck yeah, buy a freaking house, buy a second house. It's great. And even if rates are upticking, I've heard that too. Like rates are upticking, it's going to kick people out of the market. Market's going to level. It'll level a little bit, but I want you to know that 50% of people in the Florida market don't care about rates. Why? Because 25% of buyers right now are cash buyers and 25% are foreign buyers. Those 25%, 50% don't care about rates. Doesn't matter what rates do. And guess what? People are still buying houses with 8% rates, 10% rates. So anything below a five right now is freaking phenomenal. And it'll level out a little bit once the bond tradesmen stop with inflation and blah, 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 all this stuff. But yeah, um, it's a great time to own a house, but it, prices are going to continue going up. So when people tell you, no, it's going to crash and people are overpaying, mm -mm. I've been calling it, yes, it's a seller's market technically, but it's also a buyer's market because in what market could you buy a house this year and next year sell it for a profit? Tell me. Because that's insanity. That you could make a profit in a year on that big of an investment with a 97% loan, 95% loan. You know what I mean? Like that's craziness. So really all I'm trying to say, oh, this is a good stat too. Okay. So remember what I said in Orlando, January, 2020, there were 7,000 homes on the market in 2009 during the crash when the market was really crazy and oversaturated, there were 28,000 homes on the market. So that's the difference, right? People are like, oh, it's good. Even if it crashed, everyone had four bears, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, there's only 3,000 homes on the market right now. In 09, there were 28,000. So tell me how we're going to get a 25,000. You know what I'm saying? It just, I don't see it happening with everyone trying to move here. It's just, no one sees it happening. Is it going to stay this insanely crazy and on fire for forever? Hopefully not. It's probably going to level out a bit, but it's not going to go backwards. We're not going to fall down, at least from what we're seeing. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong. But these are what the numbers show us. This is what the current numbers will predict. Something could happen that's crazy that we don't know about. Obviously, like COVID happened, no one could, could have predicted that. But the inventory thing, we've kind of all kind of known it was going to happen even before COVID. It just kind of, um, what's it called? Accelerated it. So like I said, if you own a home, congratulations. If you don't, buy one. Because even if you're paying $10,000, $20,000 over in an appraisal gap right now, or you're paying towards the seller's closing costs, it's worth it. Because in a year, you will have profited or at least broken even, which is insane to think because most people don't move every year. Most people move every eight to 10 years. Um, different from my family, I moved every freaking six months or whatever. But if you're in your house for over a year, you're probably gonna be fine. So pay over it because guess what? Last year, prices increased by 20%. So let's just say that this year, it only does half that. That's still 10%, which means in six months, Houses are going to be 5% more. So you're probably going to be priced out of that house that you want. So whatever houses you're looking at now, if you think that you should be buying in you know, September, you should buffer in six months. So you should literally be looking at houses that are 5% less than the price you think you have, right? So if you were doing a $300,000 house, take that 5 6% and apply that to the houses you're looking for. Don't get, fall in love with this because this isn't going to be the same in six months. Start falling in love with a little bit cheaper houses because that's all you're going to be able to afford in six months. And that's the reality of it. Things are going up. They're going to continue to go up because we don't have houses and the houses we are building are expensive. I'm under contract for a townhome in Lake Nona for almost $400,000 brand new. Tiny interior unit. Wonderful little unit. Love it. Great investment. Proud of my friends for doing it. But that's the reality that we're in. And buy houses. That's all I'm saying. I think that's it. I'm going to go to dinner now. Ryan's probably mad at me that I took so long on this. But is there anything else that I needed to say? No, I have my notes. And really, that's it. But it's wild, wild west out here. If you need a good agent, I am a good agent. My buyer just got a house yesterday. We have closing costs built into the freaking deal, which is wild. And I told him to be very grateful because that's insane. And I was like, praise the Lord Jesus. So... It really does matter who you use because they know how to fight. They know how to word it. I can't tell you how many offers I've gotten as a listing agent that I'm like, is this a joke? 
for agents that don't know what they're doing, right? You need to make sure your person knows their stuff, has good character, good integrity, and is gonna tell you what's what. I talk to people and I'm like, hey, this is where we're at. You know what I mean? I don't blow smoke. You don't want someone blowing smoke and telling you it's all gonna be okay. This is a hard ride right now. We are, I'm your pilot, right? But it is freaking turbulence. We are going through a storm, might have to go in circles a little bit to get through, but you're gonna get to your destination and that's the most important part. You're gonna have fun at the end. So, okay, that's it. Sorry that this is a two-parter, but glad you joined and I'll talk to you next time. Peace out.